challenge a lot of the audience to go up there and take a look themselves. It really, really, really looks that way. So you take a look yourself. Certainly what we're seeing here would not be consistent with anything that anybody figures ought to be going on on the moon. The moon should be dead as a doornail. At least that's the conventional wisdom, is it not? But it's not any longer. We're talking about lunar earthquakes, volcanoes, water geysers. In a moment or two, I'm going, oh, yeah, I do see that. Now, I don't know that the light bulb has gone on over this second picture, but it's pretty interesting. It, it could be something else, but when it is described as it has been described by Glenn, it's not hard to see. It's really not hard to see. I don't know if all this adds up to the immensity of there are alien bases on the moon or not yet. But then again, we're not done. We'll be right back. Okay, so you can follow along uh, with these photographs. Uh, Glenn Steckling has them up on the coast to coast -am com website, and you're welcome to follow along with this uh, photograph, one of the moon dark side, big glowing something there. Definitely intriguing. Photograph two, something pouring from one crater to another crater. Also definitely intriguing. Um, the third photograph, is of one of our astronauts. So, Glenn, let's talk about that. That's an Apollo 12 uh, photograph, another Hasselblad high-quality photograph as well. And it shows an elliptical object staying within the frame, as you can see, elliptical bean-shaped luminescent object hanging over the astronaut's head, casting enough uh, light and luminescence to completely uh, light up the left side of the astronaut as we look at the frame. It's true. It's blossomed out, bloomed out, I think they call it in photography. It's, it's bloomed out. Now, why isn't that the sun we're talking about? Well, when we look at uh, when we look at the sun, we look at an area that, of course, is not shaped as a as a uh, ellipse or a bean shape or saucer shaped. And we're looking at a uh, a complete uh, complete planetary body that's casting a light from it. So you're looking at a sphere rather than an ellipse. Uh, it's a totally different. Uh, configuration well it's it's weird I'll give you that the best thing uh, to do it and, and, you know it does seem to be illuminating the astronaut now what about the possibility that the photograph itself is simply overexposed terribly overexposed is that possible well how can you overexpose a section of it in such a fashion, look at the rest of the photograph. Look yeah, at the uh, look at the ground and the topography here to the left side of the photograph, the yep. little ridge. Yep, I see it. All right, and you look at the stones that are here on the ground as well, the yeah. ones that are laying flat. Or, and they're not overexposed. They're yeah. not overexposed either. Yeah, yeah. So once again, we're talking about interesting photographs showing interesting features to cause us to talk about a lot of uh, yeah. other possibilities. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's pretty interesting, all right. You're right, the rest of it is not overexposed. There's a single point source for this light, and it's an extremely uh, strong light. All right, now, how about this, Doctor? If such a thing was going on as we see pictured here, how could the astronauts not have been going, oh, my God, there's something above us, something lighting it. It's like the sun has come out. Well, how would how would we know that they didn't? 
Uh, there is there is some uh, there is some uh, telemetry. Uh, I recall, I believe that was from Apollo 15, where they were talking about, uh, you know, they were seeing some type of object or what have you, and Mission Control was asking them to switch to a different ultra high frequency so that it wasn't on the broadcast channel. Is that so? So, I mean, um, these particular frequencies are monitored expressly by their governing agencies. So do, you, do you happen to have any audio of that? I would sure love to hear it. I have recalled that the transcript is in one of the publications, and I will make a note. And yeah, I, I know there's I transcripts going around, uh, Glenn, but what I'm saying is, do you know anybody who has actual audio of that? I once recall seeing it on a documentary uh, that was that short uh, film clip. I believe it also showed the lunar rover moving around, and uh, and there was a section in there. And I'm going to have to see. I cannot recall off the top of my head. I mean, it's, there's such an immense amount of material. If I find it, I'll definitely forward it to you. Okay. All right, um, I agree. That's weird. Uh, let's go down. What in the world have we got here? Uh, this is a lunar orbiter four picture, and it shows um, a certain area of the moon, and we're looking at a very straight, uh, for lack of a better description, cigar-shaped object parked right next to the crater. And you can tell uh, if you look at this from the uh, from the photographic standpoint, uh, the sun is coming from the top of the picture or the north of the picture, illuminating the southern wall of the crater. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it would be like uh, putting a cigar or pencil right next to it. And uh, perfectly straight and in configuration as well, cylindrical, and casting a very uh, irregular shadow behind it as well. Uh, that can be due to a number of uh, possibilities, either um, it not being totally on the ground or what have you. So once again, an interesting shot and certainly does not look like a natural feature. No, it doesn't. But it's not, it's still not what I would call clear evidence. I mean, for example, if we got a shot of, uh, an unquestioning shot of a building, uh, Glenn, or I don't know, something Clearly, everybody who looks at it says that ain't natural. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, this is interesting, but it doesn't, you know, come come up to that high a bar. Yeah, well, that's uh, based on individual interpretation, and everybody, of course, has that right to do that. When you look at a no lunar orbiter pictures, you're looking at a different quality of a shot, a much earlier in the space program. This is not a direct picture taken by a, a Hasselbalt camera. Right. You know, so we're talking a completely different quality of photo here. All right, next one. Uh, Lunar Orbiter 4. You're claiming this is cons actual construction activity. On this particular shot, there are some numerics into the frame itself. So someone else at the source was clearly doing some uh, research on this particular picture. Oh, so those numbers came that way from NASA? That's correct. Ah, 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 so there's are areas in here where, uh, and it goes, I believe, as far as five, since this is a, a smaller crop version of the original picture. And it shows particular areas of interest here. And in conjunction with this shot, there seems to be an area where there seems some type of activity. We talked about terrace craters, walled areas. There's also an area which seems like there are reservoirs or constructions, irregular factions like we have in Southern California for water that uh, when you look straight down on them at one particular point, you can see into them. At other times from different angles, they're silvery like reflection of water. So this is one in a series of perhaps 25 different pictures taken. Pretty weird. Different. Pretty weird. I, you know, I, I don't know if I can attach all the meaning that you just did to what I'm seeing, but it is weird looking. It's, it's busy. I'll give it that. 
very busy. There's a lot there. But I don't know that I could look at that and say that's construction. Well, yeah. Uh, each one has to determine what they see in it. And then it also helps to see the rest of the photographs in conjunction with it in the series. I wish it, I wish it wasn't like a Rorschach test. I, I wish that, you know. <laughs> Well, we have to remember, too, I mean, we're talking about a body 250,000 miles away, and uh, you're, you're, you know, you're going there in orbit, and uh, so, and you have to get used to looking at things from above to look for the shadows where the sun reflects, where it's dark, and what have you, so it wouldn't be any different than flying at 70,000 feet or even much higher. And, uh, and determining geological features here. Okay, this next one is really interesting. <laughs> it's the last one in this series, and uh, it says lunar orbiter for a cloud hanging over left side of crater. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> it does, is this, is it does this one look clear like enough it. for you? It, you know, actually, it does look like a cloud <laughs> hanging over a crater. There is not supposed to be atmosphere on the moon. And That's all there is to that. There's not right. supposed to be any atmosphere there. Now, if that's not a cloud, let's think, what the hell is it? Um, hmm. When you look at this picture, you can see there on the, on the left-hand side, you can see very clearly as you follow the rim of this crater, as you come up to this uh, obscuration, the rim stops and then continues on from underneath it from below, but also it casts a bit of a triangular shadow underneath the obscuration that hangs over the rim. Mm, it does, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So yeah. once again, another photo to Go, hmm. Yes, correct. Over. Uh, you remember uh, the obelisk in 2001? Oh, yes. Yeah. Many, many scientists believe that the moon uh, very likely may have one, uh, one of these, an object like an, uh, an obelisk or something that uh, is intended to make a transmission or a communication when we, man, uh, reach the moon and uncover it. I mean, they, they actually think this is a likelihood that another, that an alien race would put something like that on the moon. What do you think? It's possible. I can't say whether it would be or not. I mean, it's, it's possible. Since we have no evidence of that, that's the best we can do it. Leave it at that until we uncover it. Of course, it will be difficult to uncover unless we really put together a united front and go back there and, and actually do something. Well, well, I'll see you around to something. Uh, let me ask you about this. It has been that long since we've been, since man has been to the moon. We haven't been back. There are a group of people. John Lear might be one of them, who believe, uh, Glenn, that we were told uh, not to come back. We were told uh, to discontinue space travel, or we perhaps even were warned to discontinue space travel. And there are those who, who believe that's absolutely true. Um, do you? I think the other way. I think that the the exposure from space travel and the exposure to the possibilities out in space and the communications and what can be learned uh, from that poses a change, a change to our way of thinking and a change to our way of life. And we are very resistant to that change. In 75, when the space program terminated, it terminated from lack of funds, it terminated from lack of interest, political will, et cetera, et cetera. But there's more to it than that's just that exposure. They bring about changes in the environment and in the patterns of how 
we conduct business on this planet and i think